with Captain Xavier. I'm Chalo, and I play Captain Xavier here on YouTube and HVZs and in various other places, including a medieval recreation group called the Empire of Adria. At least I used to back in my youth. Uh, and this story, the story you guys voted on this time, is again from there. This is the story of the first Scots Raid War, which was the first war that I think we ever got video of. And I was able to find that video, and I was able to access that video, so there is actually going to be a lot of footage from that video. It's horrible, I warn you. It's kind of fuzzy and it's shaky, but you'll get to see um, me in action back when I was, I think, 18. This video is from 19 years ago, so yeah. The Scots Raid War, the first Scots Raid, uh, happened in 2001. Uh, it was my, I've been in the group for less than a year, so I wasn't Captain Xavier yet because I hadn't gotten knighted. I took the title of Captain when I became a knight because you call officers sir, and you call knights sir, and I was a pirate, and, and all of that jazz. Um, but I hadn't actually gotten knighted yet. Uh, it takes a minimum of 18 months to get knighted, and I've been in the group for less than a, like I said, less than a year. I don't know exactly how long. Uh, but this was the third war that we'd had. We'd already had the first Banner War, we'd had the first Holy War, and then we had the Scots Raid War, which took place at a Ren Fair called Plaisance, which is just north of Spokane, Washington, and they actually had a permanent site with a, a city, a bit of a city wall and some structures and um, neat location. Absolutely fantastic terrain. And they let us come and hold our war there. So we had, you know, tournaments and we had feasts and, and then we had this war where a group that were designated as the Scots, though I think only two of them were actually Scots at that time. Um, maybe three, technically. I, we had uh, Hamish, McLean. We had uh, Cressida, McLean. And then there was uh, Kyle McAllister, who I don't think he was actually in Clan McLean yet. He might have been eventually. He eventually became Sergeant Major Kyle of the crew. But this was many years before the crew was formed. Um, and then we also had Mikos, who was brand new to the group. Went on to become Sir Mikos and Duke Mikos and a genuinely wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, but uh, he was brand new... Um, on that. And that was our side. I was also on the Raiders because I was a mercenary, so it made sense. Uh, plus, we were raiding an English village and I was French, so of course I sided with the Scots. Uh, on the Scots side, I believe they had um, Viceroy Phelan. I don't think he was a Duke yet. He might have been. I don't remember, but Phelan. Um, Stephen, eventually Sir Stephen Vidatha, but not at the time. Um, Mary Gillis. Uh, Sir Eric, who was from the story last time. he We'll get to see him in action. And I think the last one was Dame Ruth. I could be wrong about that, but I think those are those those are the two armies. Only, we were a fairly small group at the time. We were had just started. And uh, we, were, we were only, we were, I think the whole organization was a little, or the whole local subdivision was a little more than a year old. Um, and yeah, so... The way the war went, because we had such small numbers, we went with multiple resurrections. And I don't remember if we had a limit. It was probably ten lives each. I don't think anyone ever actually ran out of lives by the end of the fight. Some people might have been pretty close. Uh, but the way we set it up was the attackers were attacking the main gate. The defenders got to defend the gate. And the de defender's res point was a little ways behind the gate. And the attacker's res point was a little bit outside. And when you got killed, you had to go to your res point, and there was, I think you, there was like a five second delay or a ten second delay. There was some delay before you could then come back to the fight. And if the attackers were able to get a certain number of attackers inside the gate, so they had to be inside the, the, the city, then the defender's res point became the attacker's res point, and the defender's res point moved up. In further into the city at, at where there was a church and then the attackers could move forward and attack the church and same thing applied uh, we had to attack the church and if we could get a certain number of attackers into the church then the church's res point became our res point and the attackers had uh, the defenders had to then get pushed back to the next res point which was at the chessboard there was a, a, a pit where they did live chess and it was really cool and Again, our res point then became the church. Their res point moved further back uh, behind the chessboard. And then we had to try to get this 10-gallon, um, 15-gallon, this big water jug back out the front gate. We had to get to it, which was behind their, their battle line, get the water, get all the way back out again. 
And it actually was full. So it was heavy. And it was like 95 degrees in the shade. It was warm. And um, here, here's the footage. Let's, uh, let's just let's show some combat footage. And the gate has fallen. So that was the battle at the gate. We managed to break through. We finally managed to push them back and, 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 get, and get our line in. And they retreated back to the church. We then raided the tavern. <laughs> While they were all standing out in the sun, preparing to defend the church, waiting for us to jump out of any tree in any minute, we're down in the tavern getting a drink, having a snack, and then finally stagger up the hill. Uh, the first wave was thoroughly repulsed, I believe, and then the second wave we managed to break in. And at, in the middle of the fight, well, you'll, you'll see what happens. Here is here is the the second assault on the church. Now it gets sneaky, and this, this was the kind of stuff that happened a lot, and I loved it about this group. While we were um, rallying for the, for the next assault, um, Sir Steve, or it wasn't Sir Stephen yet, Stephen snuck down and stole all of our combat arrows, because there wasn't any combat archery allowed at the Battle of the Church. At the gate, we could use arrows, because it was a limited battlefield. And then at the, the chess pit, chessboard, we could use arrows, because again, it was a directional battlefield, and the, the bystanders could be, uh, could be safe. The church was right in the middle of everything, and there really wasn't any good way to make sure that there was no bystanders in the way of any archery. So they didn't allow it at all at the church. And so we had left our gear down um, by the gate uh, in order to just keep it safe so we weren't carrying all that gear. And then when, once we took the church and we, we could, could move on the, uh, uh, the chest pit, we were going to go down and get our, our gear. But while we weren't looking, 
Stephen stole all our arrows. <laughs> because he, I don't think he had, he might not have even had a sword um, to start with. And so he might not have been involved in the Battle of the Church at all, or he might have, but he only had a single sword. I don't remember. Um, point was, he took all our arrows. So we get to the final, the chess battle, and uh, we've got no arrows. But he does, so we line up and let him shoot at us so that Hamish can then shoot back. Hamish was by far the best archer we had. I was probably a close second, but we needed the swordsman. And at this point, by this point in the game, I was probably one of the, uh, the best swordsmen. Uh, definitely one of the best swordsmen in the group. Um, the Duke could probably still beat me in a straight fight more, more often than not. But uh, pretty much anybody else I could take at this point. So I, rather than going as an archer... I decided to go as a shieldman so that uh, we could hopefully get through and, and get the bucket. And uh, here were the results. Oh, I'm just looking around. Don't mind me. Yeah. <laughs> you, the short one, I challenge you. <laughs> they, they can't shoot any arrows, though. Okay, oh, no arrows. Shoot, so you throw them off. Yeah. Will she yeah, accept the challenge? Oh, I do have one more bad thing. I think the other one's just going to go in that direction. Go! <laughs> And the crowd goes wild. Yeah. And the hiding crowd goes wild. Uh, almost wild. Oh, excellent stunt. That's what you call an arrow catcher.
And now we get to see the most magnificent display of newbie fighting I have ever seen in my life. We have Mikos and Steven, both who eventually go on to become great knights and amazing swordsmen, but they weren't that yet. And this exchange is just amazing to see because I know how good they eventually got. And so seeing them in their noob states just pleases me greatly. And then the arrow from Hamish. That was a beautiful camera shot, by the way. So we, I got out with the bucket, and we got back to the church, and we sent the bucket down with Mikos and Cressida. Eric charged down after them. Kyle charged down after Eric. And then... Hamish and I, after we got killed once and then resurrected and then got ready again, we headed down to see what happened, because we didn't know. Um, I think the two people who ran with the bucket only had one sword between them, maybe two swords. Um, and Eric was a very good fighter, so there was a really good chance if he'd caught them that he would have taken them out. And who knows what would have happened if he'd gotten hold of the bucket. He could have hidden it, he could have run off with it. We didn't know. Um, so we decided to go after looking at him. Uh, turns out the war was already over. We had already won, but we didn't know this. Um, this next exchange, it's such a shame they didn't catch it on camera. Steve came flying up behind me. I managed to get my shield up just in time to block him, but he was going for Hamish because he and Hamish were rivals, and one of them was going to schmuck the other one. And this was his moment. He comes flying down the hill, two swords raised. Hamish kneels at the last second, sticks his sword out sideways, and catches Steve right in the belly and rolls him down the hill. We then turned to, we hear somebody howling, and it was, it was Mary Gillis. Um, and, uh, here's how that went down. I think you want to howl, it's Mary. <laughs> Give me a sword. Now, I know how it looks. It looks like big, mean Captain Xavier has shield-bashed and brutalized this poor little girl. But what you have to remember, you have to understand, is that woman once broke a table while fighting Sergeant Kyle with Sergeant Kyle. So if I hadn't knocked her to the ground and beat her till she stopped moving, she would have knocked me to the ground and beat me until I stopped moving. Beautiful thing. Anyway, then Phelan shows up.
the rest of them are dead. What happened? Raiders won. Huzzah! And I murder him. This is the man who sat on me and called me his throne. I whooped him. I whooped him good. The war had already been over. We just didn't know yet. Then we retired to the tavern and all was well. Um, Dump the water over your heads? What? Well, they drink from it. They savor the booty. Savor the booty. <laughs> There's a little booty savoring going on right here. <laughs> oh, I wonder if it's allowed. Well, we did come to the inn and pillage while you guys were all waiting in there. You were here to get water. <laughs> oh, Mary, I have your token yeah. too. Here. My helm's off to all the Scots. Uh, yeah. 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 Man, my helm's off to all the defenders, well defended. Let's go! Ah. We'll get them next time. Uh, what do you think? So that was that was the first Scots raid. We came back a year later and did it all again, but that's a different story. But that will be on the list of options. The second Scots raid, uh, as well as the um, the second Holy War, I think was the runner-up. And then I'm going to toss uh, nerfing for autism back in there. So those are the three options: uh, second Scots raid war. Second Holy War or nerfing for autism. So, vote link will be in the description. And uh, thank you for watching.